everybody and welcome to today's webinar. Thank you so much for joining us for today's session. Um, my name is Kat Beedham and I'm going to be running through uh, today's webinar about uh, Copilot for Microsoft 365. Um, I am the head of uh, Modern Workplace at CPS um, and uh, yeah, specialise in all things modern work. So Copilot, uh, M365, Viva, all of those uh, fun tools uh, in my eyes. Um, so. Welcome to today's session. If you do have any questions um, or uh, anything that you want to ask throughout, if you could just use either the Q&A or the chat um, during the session and we'll be able to answer those at the end. I also have my colleague Stella on hand and she'll be able to respond to anything um, as well. We will have a couple of polls throughout the session as well, so you'll see those pop up, but I'll let you know when those are coming. Perfect. So um, in terms of today, what we're looking at is um, co-pilot and the evolution of work. So what we want to focus on is um, showing you a little bit of um, a co-pilot demonstration. So I wanted to showcase some use cases that we found ourselves, but also with some customers that we've been working with um, and a little bit about um, kind of rolling out Copilot as well. So what's worked well, um, we have kind of experience in delivering this with a few different organizations now. So we've kind of found things that or work well up front, things to kind of do to reinforce co-pilot, um, you know, tips and tricks, those types of things. So hopefully I can give you some insight. And then at the end, We'll go through the Q&A and uh, yeah, see if you would like any support with uh, implementing Copilot in your organisations as well. So before I start with the demo, which is uh, probably what we want to see, so I just wanted to start with some context setting as always, um, just in terms of um, the changes from AI, but also kind of the state of the world at the moment and why AI is so important, why so many organisations are looking at it. Um, so at the moment we have um, kind of a, a bit of an issue in terms of digital debt. So we have employees who, you know, they're spending a lot of time, um, you know, communicating um, at back to back meetings. We have employees who, you know, 43% of time, um, employee time is spent creating content, drafting content and creating content that's probably already existing, but they're just, you know, recreating things. When we speak to organizations about why they're looking at co-pilot, one of the things um, and one of the key vision statements that we keep coming up is, you know, the idea that we want to use co-pilot to give employees time back to be able to do the bits of the job that they love. You know, we don't want our, our you know, social workers spending hours and hours drafting documents and going through emails. We want them to be spending time with, you know, children and families. Um, you know, we want our legal team to have a little bit more time to prepare for court instead of, you know, drafting lots of um, precedents and, you know, lots of different types of documents. So we've got some kind of key challenges in the workforce at the moment, at the moment um, that Copilot absolutely supports with. So, um that's why most organizations or a lot of organizations now are looking at AI, more in, in particular co-pilot. Um, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about the changes in AI. So obviously we've we've had AI in terms of you know a technology for a while, and it was great at doing things like playing chess and you know, we could play chess on the computer and it would uh, it would be able to to win a game or two. But what's actually happening is AI is changing and it's becoming, you know, it's it's performing at human-like levels. So what we mean by that is, you know, there's AI that's creating applications and building code, and uh, there's AI that, you know, is, is creating ideas and writing, drafting content. On the left there, you can see um, there was actually an AI that generated um, a piece of art that won under first place at an award. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's absolutely changed from what it was. Um, and I think that's really important that, you know, Microsoft have harnessed this technology for um, the benefit of people. And what they've decided to do is create, and they did this in eight months, they've created Microsoft Copilot using that AI technology. Um, and Microsoft Copilot, um, I just wanted to share this slide because it just kind of highlights how many Copilots there are. So last year, Microsoft announced Copilot and um, uh, they have announced in all of their products. So we have Copilot for security. Um, we have Copilot for Windows 11. Um, we have a GitHub version. We have Dynamics. Um, you know, there's a whole list of 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 
um, this AI technology and all our different products across Microsoft 365, Azure, Power Platform um, and our operating systems as well. Um, the one that we're going to focus on today is the modern work version, so the Microsoft 365. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you some of these uh, as a live demonstration and also talk about some of the use cases and how we're actually implementing this with customers today um, and what we're doing now. Uh, but just wanted to show you the skill because it's, uh, it's pretty exciting stuff. So what we're going to focus on today is Microsoft 365 Copilot, or they've actually changed the name now to Copilot for Microsoft 365. It might change back, we never know. Um, but uh, this is Copilot embedded across Microsoft 365 apps. So when we open Word, when we open Excel, we'll see a little Copilot button and we'll be able to click on it and ask it questions and ask it to do things. Now, the benefit of that is the fact that Copilot is embedded in things we already use. So what we found is because it's not a new system that people have to sit and learn, you know, like Teams came out and it's kind of a new way of working, but it's a new solution. You've got to understand channels and notifications and posts and files. And, you know, there's a whole lot of stuff that you have to learn. Um, if you're implementing a CRM solution, you have to sit there and learn dynamics. You know, it's it takes quite a lot of time with Copilot because it's a button in your existing things that you're using on a regular basis. We actually haven't found that much resistance in terms of people using it. Um, and the messaging that we're using is you can't break it. So don't be afraid to click and ask it to do something. Try it out. And if it doesn't work, then, you know, it doesn't do that. Or maybe you need to ask in a different way. Um, so that's kind of the benefit of it as well. You can't really create, you know, if you create a new team, it creates a group in the background. There's no kind of governance risks or anything like that, um, which is is great in terms of user adoption. And it's embedded across the Microsoft 365 apps, um, but there's a few different kind of ways that it benefits employees. So one is unleashing creativity. So that idea that you don't have to start from a blank page. If you're in Word, you're looking at a blank page, maybe you have to write a job description, maybe you have to write a piece of communication or a press release, or you're writing a, a contract. Um, Copilot can help you draft and do the first draft. And you don't have to kind of start from that first page. It's much easier to edit something uh, than start from scratch. There's also productivity. So summarizing content, I'll show you some examples of that. Some real life examples that we found quite useful um, and up level and skills. So you can ask Copilot to explain things to you, to showcase things um, and help you improve uh, your quality of work as well as, um, you know, doing quite quickly. One of the key things that we have um, Done with organizations is again um just to emphasize the fact that co-pilot is your co-pilot it's not your pilot so it's there to support and help you and save you time it's not going to do your job for you so as part of our messaging we have made sure that we include things like you know you're still responsible for your work because Copilot's not going to do everything. It might do the first draft. So if you're using Copilot to create a press release, make sure you're checking it before it's sent out because your name's on the document, your name's at the end of those emails, um, you're still responsible. So that's kind of the, the emphasis. And that helps um, with any kind of concerns around, oh, if, why am I needed if Copilot's going to do everything? It's absolutely not. It's there to assist and give you a bit of time back, um, which we found extremely valuable. Um, I did before I dive into a demo, I did want to explain a couple of the different versions of Copilot as well, because what we found is the Bing chat version of Copilot has now been renamed as just Copilot um, actually has become quite useful um, for organizations who you might be just trialing out Copilot. So um, in terms of, um, you know, Microsoft 365, we know the cost of the licenses and most organizations now are purchasing, you know, a couple hundred licenses or, a, a, you know, licenses for a group of people in the organization. Um, and they're, use, you know, doing use cases and trying it out and seeing the value of it. For the rest of your organization, what we found is that, you know, word of mouth spreads and people say, why can't I have a license? And, you know, that kind of comes up. They actually have this version, which you get as part of Windows 11. So if you're on Windows 11, you have the Copilot button where you can still ask it questions. It will, it's not going to look at your M365 tenant in terms of the data, but it will support with, uh, you know, drafting content and, um, you know, blog ideas and uh, those types of things as well. And what we actually found was social workers in uh, councils use this version. Um, use this version quite a lot because they um, do a lot of handwritten notes when they're visiting families 
and their handwritten notes, they would sit in their car and then type all of those notes up and then they'd have to reorganise them into sections before they could upload it to like a case file. Yeah. Um, what they would do is take a photo of their notes, open up Copilot on their mobile and just send the photo to the chat, so the Copilot chat, and it would actually turn their notes into text. And not only that, but it would reorganize their notes for them as well. So there's still value in this version, even if you're just trialing out this version. Um, so I just wanted to, to make that clear. All right, before I start with a quick demo then, which is what we're probably waiting for, I did want to just run a quick poll um, just to find out if um, you, what you kind of think of when we talk about AI, um, what kind of word springs to mind? So I'm going to start the poll. If you are able to, it should just pop up on your screen now, but if you could just enter one word that comes to mind when you think about AI. Um, enter your word, put it in the submit. What we're trying to find, find is, um, you know, what we're kind of, um, what we're thinking of when it comes to, to AI. If there's any kind of, you know, words of excitement or um, concerns. Automation, amazing, creative efficiency these are all positive some some people have put skynet and what's that we've done before efficiency working smarter absolutely thinking out of the box revolutionary my goodness that's a great one um i think this is one of the most exciting times we've actually had in technology and i've been doing um you know these types of things for over a decade and i've never seen such a reaction to co-pilot um, you know, from end users, from people who just don't know tech and it's just, you know, they're turning around saying it's going to change our lives, um, which is so, so exciting. Amazing. Perfect. Wonderful. All right. So you've actually got a spot on there. So I'm really glad we're all feeling very positive about uh, Copilot and about AI. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just hop over to a demonstration now and show you some of the different products. Then I'll talk about some use cases and then we'll talk about the implementation of Copilot and some things that we just learned in the process and um, things that became quite useful when we were doing it. Um, and then we'll talk about how we can help and support you as well um, if you did need that from CPS. So I'm just going to open up my Apologies, I'm in the office today, uh, so bear with me if there's a little bit of noise. Uh, so what you can see is I've opened up my uh, my Microsoft 365 uh, tenant and I'm actually in Outlook. Um, so I've opened up my emails. Now, I as an organization, we've got Microsoft 365 um, Copilot. So I get Copilot in Outlook, Teams, Word, um, Excel. And what it's actually going to do is when I ask it to do something, um, it's going to search across my Microsoft 365 tenant. So it's looking at SharePoint files, it's looking at OneDrive files, Teams chats, meetings, emails that you've sent. That's all the kind of things that it's looking for. Now, when you buy Microsoft 365 Copilot, it's for your tenant. So it's not um, kind of, you know, pulling stuff from other um, places. It's specifically looking at your data and your environment. So it adheres to all of your security and compliance policies that you put in place as well. So, um, you know, just our kind of advice, and I'll go through this in the, the next section, but uh, just make sure you've kind of got a baseline of, you know, your sites are private and your most sensitive information is secure. Um, but I'll go through that uh, in a little second. I've just seen we've had a question come up, so I'll just uh, open that up quickly and just see. Uh, handwritten notes, what's the service being used to do that? So um, we, uh, and it's not sure that it is not something the mailman does. So if you, um, so we use the Copilot, the Bing chat um, functionality to, to do that. It's not necessarily the LL, LLM um, that's doing it. It's pulling out the response when you ask it a question. Um, it's scanning the photo that you put in it and then it's responding to it. Um, so it's um, it's using the Bing chat version um, of Copilot that we use for that. OneNote also does it, um, but the Bing chat tends to work uh, quite good as well. All right, so um, what you can see on my screen is my uh, Outlook. And you'll see that I've got an email thread here. So I just go to, uh, let's go to uh, this one. So you can see I've got a couple of emails in here. Maybe I've just come back for, I've got quite a few emails in here. I've just come back from annual leave. I've got 20 emails in my inbox. 
um, what we found is, um, you know, this was a major use case for most customers and across most departments and most services is just the amount of email traffic that you get. So what I can do with Copilot is ask for a summary. So I can say, OK, um, I don't want to have to sit and read 20 emails and then see where I've been asked to do something. Uh, I could just click summary by Copilot. This is going to scan my email and it's going to pull out the key points and actions um, and it's going to pull out if I've been asked to do anything. Um, so you'll see here it's just generated a summary. So it said you've completed several tasks, you know, you've brainstormed, there's a meeting happening, you've got a weekly project sync. And what it's also doing is it's pulling out exactly where in the email thread it's got this information. So you'll see it's got a little number next to it. When I click on that, I can be taken to the email um, that contains that information. So this is very important. I want to double check it, click on that, and it'll take you directly to it. So in terms of summarizing your emails, the amount of time this saves, although it could be just a few minutes, um, that on a daily basis is quite valuable and one that we've seen go across the board. Um, I don't even have to just use the summary feature. There is a, a reply and draft feature with um, uh, Outlook. So if I just hit reply all, uh, I'm going to X the summary for now. What you'll see is I've got an opportunity to draft with Copilot, so I can choose a re response. And this is actually giving me some suggestions. So it's saying, do you want to request an extension? Do you want to express your appreciation? Do you want to acknowledge and confirm? Let me go and choose uh, a custom one. So I want to kind of, you know, create one myself. So uh, respond with an update to the project. It went well. Uh, ask for a meeting. Appreciate help, their help. What I can do from there, so this is just giving it a quick, here's what I want you to put in the email. Um, you can uh, put some bullet points in there if you want to. Here's the things I want you to you know, form in this email, but I can actually change the tone. So I can choose uh, formal, casual, quite direct. I can choose to make it a poem, which is always a fun one to demonstrate. Um, and I can also choose the length. So if any of you have been using um, ChatGPT or any other kind of, you know, AI solution, it tends to pull out quite a lot of information. Um, whereas here I can, you know, turn around and say, let's make it a short poem, for example. Um, something that is coming is a button on here that says sound like me. So what you'll actually be able to see is um, Copilot will look at the language that you're using in your emails and it will form an email based on that. So the sound like me is coming soon. Let's make it a poem for now and I'm just going to generate that um, and that's going to create the first draft. Now with this one again this is quite a good um, use case for a number of different services and departments. It's one that goes across the board, um, having just the ability to put some bullet points in there and co-pilot to draft your email, um, that's a huge time saver because um, for, especially for those who are dyslexic or, you know, struggle uh, with writing, you know, and spending the time crafting lots of long emails, you've got co-pilot to do it in seconds. What we would always say again is um, make sure people are checking their work because um, you know your name's at the bottom of the email so always make sure you check um, but you'll see it's just created a little poem for me with some of the things that I've asked it to do I can change it I can regenerate you can regenerate it and ask it to do it again and it will do that about 30 times you get about 30 regenerations I can go ahead keep that and then I can hit send and I can go ahead and send that information. What you'll notice is it just had a little pop up there to say that this email was AI generated. Make sure you check it before you send it. So it will give you that notification as well. Um, you have the draft uh, op option, but there is also um, coaching as well. So what you'll see in all of your apps is the little Copilot icon in your toolbars. So I can choose coaching by Copilot. So if I type at least 100 characters, I'll be able to get some guidance on if I'm using too many filler words or, you know, if you want to change your tone or, you know, here's what I recommend to make your email sound a bit better. So if you didn't want to draft, you can use the coaching as well. Um, we did a session recently um, with um, some uh, counsellors in our kind of council uh, and uh, this was a big one for them because they spend so much time in emails responding to you know members of the public and representatives that um you know it just even drafting those emails it just saved them a huge amount of time and um, so it's quite a good one uh, on the outlook one so um you do have to be using the new version of outlook to use copilot in February, they are releasing the draft and the coach 
features in the classic Outlook. Summary is not there yet. Uh, they haven't got that on the roadmap. Um, but the biggest challenge that we found um, is actually people just not liking the new Outlook. So that was the only resistance really that we've had with it is actually there's some features in the new Outlook that you can't do that you could do in the classic and some people would just prefer using the classic version so in February those are rolling out uh, to classic Outlook so that should kind of go over that but um, for now you do have to be using the new version of Outlook to access Copilot. Um, all right so a couple of other examples that I just wanted to share um, so we also have um, Copilot and Word so Copilot and Word allows you to do a couple of key things one draft documents um, from scratch and to summarize documents as well. So let's start with uh, some drafting. So I'm just going to open a blank document. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to ask Copilot to create a job description when we give it some information. So you'll notice um, as soon as I open a blank document, I've got draft with Copilot. So you'll notice the little pop up box here. So I can say um, draft a job description. Cool. For a HR manager, include skills, experience required, um, attributes, uh, and make it formal. Now, what you'll see is that I'm putting in, I'm asking Copilot to do something. So that's um, using prompts. Yeah. One thing that we found is prompt training has been very, very useful when we're rolling out Copilot. So, um, yeah. The more you, the more information you give it, the more specific you are, the better. So, um, you know, if I was to ask Copilot, we actually had a legal team who used Copilot to draft a Word document, and they asked it to include some legislation. It actually pulled legislation from America, so we kind of had to say, you know, make sure in your prompt you say UK legislation and maybe give it a time period as well. So it does, you know hallucinate so it will sometimes kind of put things in there that maybe aren't necessarily real so again check and work before it's sent out but on the whole it does do a good job of kind of drafting um a first draft uh, of bit of content and um, what we can also do is reference specific content as well so if i have an existing job description i can attach the file and say base it off of this document um so i can make it a bit more specific in this case i'm just going to leave it as it is and i'm going to hit generate and that's going to create that draft for me in a few seconds um, so what this is doing is it's um, in terms of the architecture, I know we haven't covered too much of the architecture here with Copilot because um, it's more about use cases and kind of the evolution of work. Um, but what this is going to do is it's going to go away. So I've asked it to do something, given it a prompt. It's now going to look at my uh, graph, Microsoft. Um, it's going to look at all of my um, information, my data, anything that's relevant. It uses semantic index as well. So it's looking at the relationships between my data and the context. So it's not just looking for keywords. It's not just going to look for HR job description. It's looking and understanding that, um, OK, so your HR job, job description, here's an existing one. Um, and this person wrote that document and this person's a HR manager and the, their duties are this. And it's kind of pulling all of that together, understanding it, checking it, sending it to the LLM, which is then creating and drafting that response um putting it from ai language into human language and then sending that response back to me and it's doing that in a, in a few seconds so what you'll see here is it's just drafted um you know a quick job description um it has skills and experience qualities um i can keep it regenerate i can add to it so you know include more details change the you know bullets into a table um you know you can kind of edit it as you need to but in terms of a first draft it's better than just having to do this from scratch and start from a blank page um so job description for hr managers is one that's come up um quite a few times we've um also had in terms of legal teams there are solicitors are drafting lots and lots of documents we have social workers who are drafting lots of case files um we ourselves in a professional services team we draft quite a lot of um you know designs and implementation plans and things like that where copilot will do a good job to get us to a certain point and obviously we need to then tweak it and make sure it's relevant uh, and correct um but you'll see here it's just pulled that up for me very quickly and I can go in and I can edit and update as I need to. Um, the other one that we found um, has been quite useful is the um, summary. So 
Um, what you'll see here is I have an example. This is not a real contract, but we have a contract for services uh, with our partner, for example. What I can do with Copilot is I can summarize the document. So you'll see I've got my Copilot icon on the top right. I can ask questions about the document. Um, I can ask Copilot to summarize it, summarize this document in two bullet points or three bullet points. I don't know if anybody's been in the process of tenders where you have to read a big long tender and it's a million pages and you've got about five of them to look through. And um, we've used it for summarizing some of the key responses to tenders, which has saved us quite a bit of time. But in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask it to um, summarize the key risks uh, in this contract. And I'm going to go ahead and submit that and that's going to scan my document and it's going to pull out where there's any kind of risky clauses uh, that I have in in my file. So again, when we've spoken to legal teams and I know um, you know, legal teams, everything has to be quite accurate. Um, so although it does a good job of quickly summarising, so you'll say here there's kind of main ideas, there's some kind of risky clauses in here that may be risky to um, the organisation. It's pulled those out and it's shown me where in the document and highlighted where it is. So you still want to do a check, um, but in terms of like summarising those key points and taking you straight to it, if you've got a, you know, a 10 page document, it works quite well. Um, so that one that's it's come up quite a few times um, in terms of summarising content. We do get asked quite a lot about templates. So templates, it, it does work with templates, but not as well as it will. So it will get better over time. Um, but at the moment, if we have a template in Word, we can kind of update that template using Copilot so we can, you know, change paragraphs and insert things. Um, what we found is we struggled getting it to, uh, you know, put things into a template. Um, but I think that over time that will improve. Uh, but that's the only thing that keeps coming up with Word. Um, the only other thing uh that has come up is um in terms of I've already mentioned in terms of summarizing the detail is just double checking because sometimes it will um hallucinate when it comes to to creating those uh, some content from the uh in your word document all right so um so that's the the word uh, versions the other couple ones i just wanted to um talk through in terms of use cases um excel was another one um now excel the in the version at the moment, in the M365 for Copilot version, we um, have to have a table of data in there to use Copilot. So you'll see I've got Excel open, and if I open the, the Copilot button on the right hand side, you'll see it will tell me that I need a table of data to be able to do anything. So you'll see I'm not I've not selected a table, so it's telling me I only work with an Excel table for now. Make sure that you uh, turn your data into a table. So that's something to be aware of. But what we've done is, uh, so we've used Excel and we found it being used for a number of different ways. So we have the finance teams who have used it for support with budget reporting, payroll, uh, monthly payroll checks. Um, we actually had, interestingly, there was a team, a whole team of people in an organization who spent three days a week, and apparently that never ended, three days a week minimum, um, going through data quality. So they had a list of um, employees, they had a list of kind of training that's been attended, training that's not been attended, um, and they had to kind of go through it and ma make sure they're kind of pulling out where uh, people have and haven't attended sessions. That would go into a Power BI report, but it wouldn't, you know, be as accurate as it could be. So they'd have to go through and kind of check everything. And it took them quite a lot of time. Um, and they said they use Copilot to summarize you know, pull out, there's thousands and thousands of rows in this Excel spreadsheet and they've asked Copilot to, you know, pull out the, um, or create a pivot table showing me all the people who haven't attended this training or haven't completed it and they can just um, go ahead and, and and look at that data from there. So it saved them quite a few bit of time in terms of filtering and summarizing data. But the one that we find quite useful is um, using Copilot in Excel to add formulas. Um, I don't know about you, but I absolutely hate doing formulas in Excel. Uh, I uh, can never remember them. So uh, Copilot can support with that, which is is quite good. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask Copilot to add a column with 20% margin uh, uh, on total revenue, on revenue, what's to do on revenue. So what it's going to do is it's going to work out the formula for me and it's going to explain the formula as well. So it's a great, when we said kind of unlocking skills, 
um, that's another great thing about Copilot. It's going to show me and tell me exactly um, how the formula works. So it's going to generate the formula. Here's how it worked. Here's how we're working 20% margin you know, out. So if you wanted to do it yourself, you can. So you'll see here, it's got a suggestion of the formula. So here's the formula you could use. And instead of me having to then go and do the formula, I can just choose insert column. And you'll see it's just added the column, added the title and automatically done the formula there for me as well. So um, it's that's a huge one for me because I spend ages going through it. Uh, but formulas was a, another consistent use case that we found across lots of different organizations and lots of different services and departments as well. Um, not only that, but I can then say uh, to Copilot, um, create a graph based. Uh, let's just do create a graph and let's see how let's see how good it pulls out a graph if I've just asked it nothing else apart from create a graph and um, that's the nice thing with Copilot so testing out the prompts is quite useful and I'll talk about prompt training in just a short while um, but trying out you know what's the best way to ask it something usually the best way to ask it is to ask it for an action ask it to look at a particular you know place whether that's look at the SharePoint site look at this file look at this table and um, give it like a what you want it to do the context of what you're asking it to do so this you know this uh graph is for a meeting about x y and z and um, i want you to pull out this specific data um do you want it in a certain format so the more you tell it the better results that you'll get but the good thing is you can kind of go in play around with it and um and learn how to use it uh so what we're going to do is we're going to add that to a new sheet um, and it hasn't created the chart, but you'll see because I've got too many columns of data. What you'll see is it has provided me with a pivot table, so I can go ahead and ask it um, to create either um, create the graph based on you know the revenue versus the budget or whatever it may be, um, and it will just add that to a new sheet for you. And you'll see I've got some other examples of ones that we've done earlier, um, where we've asked it to kind of create graphs. And apologies, my Wi-Fi is not great, uh, but it will go ahead and it will just kind of summarize the data and pivots and provide you with graphs, and you can add it to new sheets uh, to your Excel file. Um, so quite handy in terms of um, the 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 main use cases for that one. Um. So the only other kind of couple of ones um, that we uh, that I would say is definitely worth um, talking about is the meeting notes. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use our live <laughs> meeting that we have now. Give it a second to. Let me just oh goodness readjust this. It's not like in me. Um, I'm just trying to. Oh my goodness, it really doesn't like, doesn't want me to. Let me stop sharing and I'll reshare on the slide. In one second. So I'm just going to use our live example. Always risky. Uh, and show you the meetings. Uh, let's go to something again. So in this Teams meeting, we have turned on the transcription. Um, that's all you need to use Copilot in your Teams meeting. You, need, you don't have, need to have the recording on, but you do need to have the transcription on. This uh, has come up for every customer in every department we've ever spoken to. If you attend a meeting and you join late, you can ask Copilot to recap the meeting for you. If you're taking meeting minutes, if you're taking actions, um, we're working with some business support teams who they're, they spend so much time sitting in meetings, writing down the actions and trying to kind of make sure they coordinate who needs to do what. Um, and Copilot has come in and absolutely kind of, you know, supported them, uh, making it a lot quicker and easier for them to, to do it. Because all I can do is I can ask Copilot something about the meeting. So you'll see I've got a little Copilot icon. I can go ahead, it'll give me some suggestions. It will also give me some prompts so I can say, you know, recap this meeting so far, suggest some questions that I can ask, what are the main ideas? Um, and what I'm gonna do here is let's go to recap the meeting so far. And what it will do is it will pull out bullet point summary of everything that I've been talking about today. <laughs> so, and if we were in a conversation and it was a meeting where there was actions and we've said, you know, John, you're going to send this PowerPoint. Uh, Simon, you're going to follow up with a customer in a call. You know, we started doing actions. Copilot is pretty good at picking up those actions as well. Um, so what you'll see here is it's just giving me the key topics. 
and it's you know giving me the demonstration different versions you know I've talked about a poll in a QA and a and and so on um so it's going to give me that recap I can ask for a list of action items let's see if it picks up the ones that I've just said um and uh and it's going to kind of automatically do that after the meeting um and you can paste that and kind of share that um with uh with the rest of the audience so you'll see here go by let's share the powerpoint slides uh you know provide feedback and use cases so it's kind of picked them up um but it's uh, usually pretty good um, when you open up Copilot in a meeting, this is just for your eyes only, so only you can see this, and then you can choose to copy and paste the actions to the main chat uh, for everybody to see. Um, and you can do that even if the other people in the call don't have a Copilot license, you can still turn on Copilot, get the action items, and paste it in the chat, and the other people will be able to see because it's just a chat message. The only thing that we found is when you're in a hybrid meeting, um, so if you have a meeting where you've got some people on Teams and some people in person, it's OK at picking up actions, but it's only it only works well if you say the name of the person. So if you turn around and say, you know, um, John, you do this, it usually is better at picking it up. Um, if you are in a Teams meeting and you start talking, it's going to pick up your name just because you're in the Teams meeting. Um, there are some devices that we're trialing out at the moment, um, smart devices that will actually kind of pick up the people in the room. If you announce yourself in the room, it will pick up your and it will understand it so every time you talk in the meeting copilot will be able to understand and pick that up that it's you that's speaking which is quite cool so that's something to be aware of we did um, use this with one of our project managers her name is fanula and when i said fanula you know you need to do this action copilot did pull out her name as formula so you know take it with a pinch of salt but it does a pretty good job of uh, of saving us a bit of time and suggesting and you know questions and um it's just uh it's uh, a really useful one so uh, that's the other one I just want to point out. All right, so let's talk about uh, the implementation of Copilot and some tips and tricks. Now, what we found is Copilot um, is very much, um, most of it is uh, adoption and change management. So it's not a, a very big technical rollout. Um, and uh, and what I'll do is we could share these slides with you, but I just wanted to share as well. We do have some use cases that we found from existing customers. So some of the ones that I mentioned there, um, the social workers with handwritten notes, summarizing case files. Um, we've got the business support team with the meeting minutes and drafting <laughs> emails, finance using it for monthly payroll reviews, um, being able to debug um, scripts uh, and uh, legal. So in terms of um, being able to um, draft, you know, their solicitor, solicitor yeah. spend quite a lot of time drafting documents. Redacting documents is another feature that you can use in Copilot. Um, summarizing key risks from contracts and then HR. Um, there was a, a one of the HR directors said he had a five page document and he managed to turn that into a PowerPoint and present it to the board. So he just loved the fact that he saved, you know, so much time because he didn't like doing PowerPoint presentations. Yeah. Um, so we've got some really good use cases that I'm happy to share in the slides after the meeting. Um, what we found works quite well when it comes to rolling out Copilot. So in terms of the technical implementation, there is a readiness piece that we would recommend. So um, there's a few prerequisites that you would need to do. So you would need to make sure that obviously you're using Entra for your identity, which most most organizations are if you're on Microsoft 365. Um, you need to be on uh, either the current or monthly office um, update channel which some organizations are not on. So that's usually the one you have to do first is make sure you're on the right update channel. Um, there are some kind of uh, recommendations in terms of looking at your data. So making sure that again, as a bare minimum, your sensitive sites like in SharePoint and Teams are set to private and you know there's nothing that's set to public. And um, the recommendation, obviously, if you have got sensitivity labels on, even better. If you've got DLP on, even better, but it's um, recommended, not necessarily required. Um, it's also recommended using Windows 11, um, but again, it's you can use it on Windows 10. It's just recommended because you get the uh, the co-pilot chat and things like that. Um, so there's a few prerequisites to do. Um, obviously, if you're not in Microsoft 365, so if most of your data is in, uh, you know, an on-prem environment or in another solution, you can use Copilot to integrate with that. So you've got Copilot Studio that's included in the license, so you can integrate it with other other systems. Um, but it's best practice to have everything in the cloud, and then Copilot you just enable the license. Uh, give it a couple of weeks for the semantic index to kind of do its thing 
and then you're kind of uh, ready to go as long as you're on the right update channel um, and it should start appearing for users. Once we have done that, that readiness piece and enabled the licenses um, and made sure we're on the, we've completed the prereqs, it's mainly adoption and change management. Apart from doing that integration, you know, it's it's mainly getting people to use it. What we found works really, really well is developing use cases and KPIs up front. So a lot of organizations now are at the point where they are trialing co-pilot and making sure the investment is worthwhile. Yeah. So what we've done is we've set up KPIs that we will measure. So that's co-pilot usage. That could be, um, you know, it could be vacancies, it could be time saving, it could be, um, you know, employee well-being, which is very important. So are, are people happier in their jobs? Um, do they have more time or they're not as burnt out? Um, so understanding and, you know, focusing on what you want to measure against and also having a vision statement. Um, Copilot for a lot of uh, people has been, you know, quite scary. And, you know, when we talk about AI, people say, oh, it's going to take my job. Um, also resistance uh, comes up sometimes if I don't really, you know, some people say they don't really have time to, to look at it. Having a vision statement helps with all of those things. So create that up front. Some really good ones we've used are things like, you know, we're, we're implementing this to give you time back to do the bits of the job that you love doing. Um, you know, this is something that's there to help you. So, you know, um, it's part of our kind of digital transformation to make sure that we're giving you the best um, tools to to do your job um, to the best of your ability. So there's there's vision statements that help with communication. Um, we define use cases up front as well. So we do sessions with each department and each service to make sure that we talk through co-pilot, give them some examples, but then find out from them how they think they would use it. But that's not just looking at how they would use it for like creating documents. It's also looking at business processes as well. Is there anything that could be um, improved and business process wise um, for with co-pilot. What we then move on to from there is a center of excellence and center of excellence is usually just a Microsoft team that's created um, where we put channels in there for um, we've got some really cheesy channels where we said successful landings and takeoff tips and um, that's really to gather um, you know prompt uh, prompts that have worked quite well for people, uh, time savings. So for a large organization, that's a great way to start collecting that information. Um, we can link to uh, training, prompt guides um, that can help people. And we have an exec lounge where we use the co-pilot dashboard um, and Viva Insights to share usage and updates as we're kind of moving through. What we also did, um, which is quite useful for a large organization, especially is using a flight crew. So flight crew is um, change champions. You don't have to call them flight crew. We just have in most of our projects um, and we've created badges. Um, the flight crew have helped support the rollout. So just encouraged uh, people to try co-pilot to learn it. Um, you know, we've conducted training for flight crew so they know how to um, to use Copilot. We also have a little channel in the COE for uh, flight crew to answer questions and so on as well. So um, flight crew help you scale, then training. So um, the type of training that Copilot requires isn't sitting down and learning a new system. It's it's encouraging people to try it. Um, so floor walking. So we actually have people on site today with an organization who are floor walking. So they're going to be going up to people, encouraging them to try out Copilot. What are you working on now? Uh, you know, do you want to try and ask Copilot to help you with it and give some examples, um, encourage people to use it. We've done drop in zones where people can come and ask questions. Um, the only kind of sit down training we've done is, um, you know, 30 minute webinars where we've just gone through examples of the different products, um, which has worked quite well because people sometimes will use more they might use Word more than Excel or vice versa. So uh, that's worked quite well. But we've made sure that we provide different levels of support for the different demographics of staff that organisations have. So we might do dedicated sessions for different uh, departments. Tips and tricks and success stories always work well as well. So what you'll see is it's kind of a standard adoption change management um, project with some tweaks and changes because uh, it doesn't require heavy duty you know sitting in a room for five hours learning a new system or anything like that it's just encouraging people to use it um 
Finally, what we recommend is um, that business case. So if you are looking at Copilot, you're trialing it out, um, a business case will help look at the KPIs that you've set. It will help with um, you know, understanding the impact. We have done uh, interviews with departments. We've done uh, surveys to understand if people you know, would um, want to keep using Copilot, if they're happier in their job, if they'd stay at the organisation longer now that they have it, um, and uh, and reviewing that usage as well to make sure people are using it. And one thing that we've tended to, because Copilot licences, um, they have a cost associated to it. We've done a bi-weekly usage check. So if someone isn't using a licence, we've um, addressed that by doing more training, um, you know, more floor walking and focused areas and then worst case scenario we remove that license and give it to someone else so it's making sure that we are getting the value out of the licenses um but those are some of the things that have worked well when we're rolling out copilot again we have um you know a lot of the adoption change management work going on for um integrations with other solutions a lot of organizations we're working with now are not at that stage of integrating yet they want to make sure they can see the value in the products um, and then they'll start to map out using Copilot Studio. We're going to integrate with our finance system, our HR system, um, you know, all the different uh, systems that we use to make it even more uh, valuable. So um, those are kind of ongoing things as well. So hopefully um, that's given you a bit of an insight into Copilot, some use cases that we found, the approach that we've taken, how it's worked for their organisations. Um, and um, I did just want to give you a little bit of information about who we are, because I've talked a lot about what we've done and, and you know, the, the, the uh, work that we're doing with customers. So CPS, we are a Microsoft partner, so we can help you with Copilot. So we have everything that I've talked through, we can deliver for you. We have different Copilot packages level you need from us. Um, if you want support with the integration, if you want support with um, the readiness, we can also help with that. Um, but we're an organization and um, we have, um, you know, ProSci certified change managers. We have a whole load of technical staff to help with integrations. Um, and we have some MVPs um, in the team as well, which essentially means the people spend their time blogging and speaking at conferences in their spare time. Uh, but it does just mean that we care, we're passionate, um, and you know we want to deliver a lot more of these um, products, projects with, uh, with lots of different customers. So um, this is kind of some of the examples of what we can support with. So we've got different packages, we've got a readiness check. So if you're not sure if you're ready for Copilot, let us know, we can do a review with you. We've got a Copilot Kickstart, which is, uh, you know, we just want to get started with Copilot. We don't need the full thing, but, you know, we want to understand how you can, how you're going to measure the success and the value. And then we've got the Accelerator, which is, you know, we need support with floor walking. We need, you know, webinars. We need training, boots on the ground. Uh, we need a flight crew created, um, all that wonderful stuff. So we've got different kind of levels um, of packages, uh, depending on where you're at. Um, so that was everything that I wanted to cover. I did have one more poll to run before I go to questions, but it was just to find out from the audience um, where you're at in terms of Copilot. If you've purchased it, if you haven't purchased it, if you're looking at purchasing the licenses, um, if it's just something that you're piloting at the moment, it would be good to um, to just understand where, where everybody is uh, in terms of the the stage with Copilot. So um, I can see quite a few are, some are piloting, some are just looking at it, some haven't bought the licenses. No one seems to have bought licenses for all staff, that's fair. I haven't had a customer yet who has for their entire organization. It's very much looking at that value piece. So quite a few people um, are piloting it with a small number of staff. So um, that's good to know. So what I'll do is I'll pause now. We've got a little bit of time for questions. So I'll just see in the Q&A. If you do want to pop your questions through, please feel free to. Um, and I've got a few questions in here. So um, does the email recipient get notified that um, it has been generated by AI? No, it, no, they don't. So this is something that I attended a session with Microsoft and it was a, a discussion because it's such a new product. It's been developed and the kind of um, these kind of things are still being discussed. So the question was, should we notify, you know, whenever AI is used, it will notify you. So whenever you send the actions from a co-pilot 
you know, uh, meeting into a chat, it will say, this is generated by Copilot. You can delete it if you want to. Uh, the email will tell you, make sure you check your work. Um, same with the Word versions. Um, but the recipient at the moment doesn't receive a notification to say it's been generated by AI. Um, that is up for debate. They're still discussing if that's going to be a feature or not, um, because you also have Copilot in Viva. One of the things that was quite interesting was that people were posting um, Viva engage posts using Copilot, uh, and uh, they were, you know, just saying, okay, you could write a post on Viva Engage, and then someone could reply using AI. So it's Copilot talking to Copilot. There's no people interaction. So there was a, a discussion. Um, so at the moment, no, but it might do in the future. Uh, all right, so uh, let me just go up. Uh, there's a couple of questions. Can you train Copilot to understand your corporate risk appetite so that when it's looking for documents, it reflects what the organization regards as risk? So you can point it at different things. Um, so if you have a document or you've got something that has your organization risk levels, you can point it at that document and say, using this document as a reference, you know, go through this and look at the risk appetite. So you can, and you can do that. You don't have to set that at a tenant level. You can actually set that as long as you have that in your environment somewhere in SharePoint or OneDrive, um, ideally SharePoint, you can then, uh, you can direct it to that document, either for using a link in the prompt or attaching the file um, that has the, the risk information in it. So again, the more specific you ask, better it's going to be. So if you say, based on this, give me a response, then it's going to do a bit of a better job. Is there a headcount limit for rolling out Copilot? So they did announce the change. It used to be 300 was the minimum number of licenses you could purchase. They've changed that. The minimum number of licenses is one. So you could just buy one Copilot license and try it out. Um, so yes, smaller organizations can buy Copilot and start using it. I would recommend that you purchase more than one license though, if you really want to see the value. Because if you just kind of turn it on and start playing with it, fine. But where's the value in your staff, you know, hitting, you know, KPIs and saving time and having well-being and, and all of that great stuff. So the minimum number of licenses is one. I recommend you buy a pool, a good pool of people um, and the people you want to start with are the people who create lots of content and are expensive. <laughs> so that's who you want to look at. Um, all right. So using the HR job description as an example, is this a mix of internally script data and external? And uh, yes. Yeah, so um, so the way that Copilot works, it will look at um, it's not going to access the kind of the public intranet. Um, it will look at your M365 environment. So it will look for existing files and, and maybe existing HR job descriptions that you have. Um, it will look at your website as well. So it will pull through, it's not access public internet in the sense of, it does pull things through from it. Um, like your, it will look at your website and look at your existing job descriptions. Um, what I would recommend is when you ask it to create a job description, you point it at something. So you say, search across SharePoint, search across this site, or use this job description as an example and build me a new job, job description. So, because it will just pull from where it can, the more specific you ask, the better. Um, so that's what I would recommend there. Uh, let me just see, is the retention history of Copilot used to use determined by Copilot? Oh, I see. So. Do you mean the retention history of like people are prompting and asking? Um, if so, uh, yeah, so Copilot will adhere to all of your kind of um, security and compliance policies. Um, so there's two, two elements to that question that I'm going to provide information on. So one is you'll be able to use like auditing and things like that to, to look at um, kind of prompt histories and things like that. Uh, two is um, retention is very important with Copilot because if you don't have retention on in your organization's data, Microsoft 365, Copilot will look over everything. So um, unless you give it a specific, you know, look across the last six months, if you've got files for that are 10 years old, it may pull up things that are out of date. So it's best practice to make sure you've got retention on in your organization to make sure it's pulling out the most recent and uh, you know the most um, useful information. That's the only thing I'd say about that. Uh, can we send a copy of this recording? Absolutely. And I'll send you the slides. Um, do you have experience discovered the parents of so? 
data protection pushback. So government actually is our biggest use case for uh, co-pilot, especially in local regional government um, and councils. Um, we haven't had a, a big pushback for our data protection because co-pilot will not give you any more risk than you already have. So it's not going to open up sites. It's not going to surface information that is you don't already have access to. And because you've got a co-pilot for your specific tenant, it's not pulling in information from any other tenants or it's not pushing out information. You know, it's it's kind of locked into your environment. Um, you have a bit of control over what it kind of looks at as well. Um, so you can kind of customise it. Um, but we haven't had pushback in that sense just because it's it's adhering to everything you've already got in Microsoft 365. It's just a quicker way for people to access that information. Um, the only thing that we've had is people testing out um, before they've rolled it out is just testing out, asking it for like salary information, to see if it pulls that type of thing up. Um, but again, it's not going to give me anything I don't already have access to. So we haven't had too much of a pushback, which was surprising. But yes, um, because it doesn't do that, um, that's our that's what we found anyway. Um, data analysis and privacy implications on using Copilot. Are there suitable controls in place? Um, again, it is only going to provide you with information you have access to. So when I ask Copilot to do something, it's going to look at my emails, it's going to look at my meetings, Teams chats, channel messages, files in SharePoint and OneDrive. So it's going to look at all that information. It will not pull me anything I'm not allowed to see. So when I use it in my organization, we actually did the test of, I just searched for, provide me with salary information. And I typed in names of employees and things like that. Now I don't have access to that. And it didn't pull, it said, sorry, we can't find any of that information. So it's not going to show you anything that you don't already have access to. So it's not co-pilot controls in place. It's M365 controls in place. Have you got retention on? Are your sites set to private? Do people have access to things that they should <laughs> and shouldn't? Check that. And once you've got that in place, then co-pilot's not going to not going to give you any more risk. Hopefully that answers uh, answers that question. Perfect. All right. So I'll hang on for another couple of minutes or so. If there are any other questions, please pop them in the Q&A. Um, we will share a copy of the recording in the slide. If you do um, want to get any support with Copilot, um, whatever stage you're at, whether you're at the beginning, just looking at it, you want to maybe do a funded workshop from Microsoft that basically shows you, you know, how Copilot could be used in your organization. Um, please get in touch. We will be um, getting in touch with you as well as a follow up to say how you found the, the session um, and if you did want more information on that. But if you hit a certain criteria, you could actually get a free workshop um, that goes through Copilot that's bespoke to you. So, yes, let us know. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. Um, thank you very much, Gary. Glad it was informative. Feel free to drop off if uh, you've got other places to be. I'll hang on for another minute or so uh, and see if we've got. Any other questions? <laughs> got a question come through. Sorry, my Wi-Fi is a little. Uh, oh no, no question. Just people saying thank you. No problem. Perfect. All right. It looks like there's no more questions, so I think we'll end the session there. Thank you very much again. Look forward to uh, hopefully using Copilot. Thank you.